All right, hi. So I am Mr. Durig, right? Mr. Thomas Durig. Hi. I'm making this video because I think that um, a lot of teachers maybe don't realize just how musical the Canterbury Tales is. Uh, and maybe you might be a student who studied it in high school and, you know, are kind of like coming back to it or something and you might find something really valuable from this but i want to just explain a few important things and like actually just show instead of tell right so the canterbury tales is music it's written in verse it's poetry and it's actually a lot like rap music it's all consistent rhyming couplets um and the the meter is pretty consistent too right so i i want people to learn to try to read it to a beat and so I'm going to show you what I mean by that, right? Uh, and I think that it's important to do it because it's a really fun story with lots of dirty jokes once you get into it. But I think that um, a lot of people get stuck on, well, just reading it. So I'm going to just read it to a quick beat and uh, snap my fingers. And then I'm going to play some music. I'm doing it in this order because... God forbid, I, I imagine maybe I'll get DRM'd. In other words, like if the music is not okay, because, you know, even though I'm not trying to make money off of this, um, it could be silent during that part. So I'm going to just snap my fingers for a little bit and read the first few lines of the prologue to show you what I mean. So check this. When in April the sweet showers fall and pierce the drought of March to the root and all, the veins are bathed in liquor of such power as brings about the engendering of the flower. When also Zephyrus with his sweet breath exhales an air in every grove and hath upon the tender shoots, and the young sun, his half course in the sign of the ram's run, and the small fowler making melody that sleep away the night with open e. So nature pricks them and their heart engages, and people long to go on pilgrimages. The palmers swung to seek the stranger strands of far-off saints hollowed in sundry lands and especially from every shire's end of England down to Canterbury they wend. Right? So it's fun and, and I think a lot of teachers maybe get hung up on spending like a week, you know, the prologue's so long, how do you get through it? Um, when you make this, when you make this music, you can actually get through it in like two or three days um, because it's fun. So check this. Let's do it with some music. Y'all probably recognize this. I'm going to do two different styles of rap so you can check this. When in April the sweet showers fall and pierce the drought of March to the root and all the veins are bathed in liquor of such power as brings about the engendering of the flower. When also Zephyrus with his sweet breath exhales an air in every grove and half upon the tender shoots and the young sun is half course in the sign of the ramp has run. And the small fowl making melody that sleep away the night with the peace so nature pricks them and their heart engages. The people long to go on pilgrimages and palmers long to seek the stranger strands of far off saints hollowed in sundry lands and especially from every shire's end of england down to canterbury they went to seek the holy blissful martyr quick to give it help to them when they were sick it happened in that season that one day in southwark at the tavern as i lay ready to go on pilgrimage and start for canterbury most devout at heart at night there came into that hostelry some nine and twenty in a company of sundry folk happening then to fall in fellowship and they were pilgrims all that towards canterbury meant to ride the rooms and stables of the inn were wide they made us easy all was of the best and briefly when the sun had gone to rest i'd spoken to them all upon the trip and was one with one with them in fellowship anyway let's rise early and take the way to canterbury Because at some point, the host of the party starts talking near the end. So, this whole thing, right? It's, this prologue is super long because there's like 30 characters, right? But what's it all about? Well, you skip to the end. They all meet in this, app, uh, in this tavern and the host gives them a challenge. Something like this. Host gave us great welcome, everyone was given a place and supper was begun. He served the finest victuals you could think, the wine was strong and we were glad to drink. A very striking man, our host. 
posed with all and fit to be a marshal in a hall. His eyes were bright, his girth a little wide. There is no finer Burgess in Cheapside. Bold in his speech, yet wise and full of tact. There was no manly attribute he lacked. What's more, he was a merry hearted man. After our meal, he jokingly began to talk of sport and among other things. After we'd settled up our reckonings, he said as follows, truly gentlemen, you're very welcome and I can't think when. Upon my word, I'm telling you no lie, I've seen a gathering here that looks so spry. No, not this year as in this tavern now. I think you up some fun if I knew how. And as it happens, a thought has just occurred to please you, costing nothing on my word. You're up to can of very well, Godspeed. Blessed St. Thomas, answer to your need. And I don't doubt, before the journey's done, you mean to while the time in tales and fun. Indeed, there's a little pleasure for your bones. Riding along, and all dumb as stones. So let me then propose for your enjoyment, just as I said, a suitable employment. And if my notion suits and you agree, and promise to submit yourselves to me, playing your parts exactly as I say, tomorrow as you ride along the way, then by my father's soul, and he is dead. If you don't like it, you can have my head. Hold up your hands and not another word. Well, our opinion was not long deferred. It seemed not worth a serious debate. We all agreed to it at any rate and bade him issue what commands he would. My lords, he said, now listen for your good and please don't treat my notion with disdain. This is the point. I'll make it short and plain. Each one of you shall help to make things slip by telling two stories on the outward trip to Canterbury. That's what I intend. And on the homeward way to journeys and another two. Tales from the days of old and the man whose story is best told, that is to say, who gives the fullest measure of good morality and general pleasure. He shall be given a supper, paid by all, here in this tavern, in this very hall, when we come back again to Canterbury. And in the hopes to keep you bright and merry, I will go along with you myself and ride all at my own expense and serve as guide. I will be the judge, and those who don't obey shall pay for what they spend upon the way. So if you all agree to what you've heard, tell me at once without another word. And I will make arrangements early for it. Of course we all agreed, in fact we swore it delightedly and made entreaty too. Then he should act as he proposed to do and be our governor in short and be judge of our tale and general referee and set the supper at a certain price. We promise to be ruled by his advice. I have this memorized because of how catchy that is when I when I do the host part to 50 cents in the club. So I'm putting that out there in the world because... I want people to know that Jeffrey Chaucer is really cool and he wrote some really cool stuff and it's music and if you can teach it like music it's really accessible anyway I'll step off my soapbox <laughs>